we will be recording this session um, and we will have plenty of time for question and ask, answer at the end. So I'd like to thank June Gerard and I'll go ahead and welcome Diane this morning who will introduce our speaker. Hey, thank you, Julie. Um, yeah, I think we're in for a real treat this morning with June. Um, I love the title of her uh, presentation, which was called A Life of Serendipity. So I looked that up. I thought I knew what it meant. But the dictionary says it's the occurrence and development of events by chance in a happy or beneficial way. And I'm all for that. <laughs> so, having said that, I'm going to introduce June and then we'll all be back later um, for questions and answers and comments. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Uh, that was very nice. Um, I think you will find uh, a lot of changes. Uh, I think I'd like to take this opportunity because I don't want to forget it at the end to thank my best audience, my director, my producer, my script writer, <laughs> uh, everything, the most wonderful uh, uh, person that you could have helping you do anything and that's Dick Martin. And thank you so much, Dick, for everything you have done. Are you ready? That's it, I'm okay. ready. I'm here to tell you about the adventures in, of living, when, and my adventure has been uh, serendipity. Um, it's been defined by the events that happened by chance throughout my life, always usually in a happy way. Um, I was born in Brooklyn, New York in, on April 9th, 1933. My mom and dad were immigrants who came from Lithuania and Poland. And when they came, they were, my mom was five, my dad was seven. Uh, my mother graduated from Brooklyn High School and Brooklyn College. And my dad was in a home for boys until he was 16, at which time he enrolled himself in school to learn to read and write. And that's a long story, so I'm not gonna tell it. I had a wonderful mother who told me that I could do anything I wanted to do if I wanted to do it bad enough. And she warned me that beauty was only skin deep and did not last. I was lucky to have her until I was 70 years old. My father was tough as nails on the outside and soft on the inside. He died when I was 55. We uh, moved to California uh, in 1942. Uh, my dad had a tire business and because of the war, rubber was needed by the government for the war effort and that sort of closed down his business. So we decided to go to California and where my aunt and uncle were living. So we took a train and we arrived in, I was thought I was going to the west and I was looking forward to seeing the cowboys and Indians and the horses and all those wonderful things. And I was very disappointed when I walked out of Union Station and saw cars and people and streets. So I had to accept the fact that it was just another city uh, I was diagnosed with poliomyelitis at, uh, and taken to Children's Orthopedic Hospital in Los Angeles. Um, I, I don't remember whether it was the, the third or fourth grade, uh, but I went through rigorous therapies and came out with one leg a little shorter than the other, but walking straight as an arrow. Uh, I was shopping with friends when I was in the eighth grade at Macy's Department Store on Wilshire Boulevard when a woman came up to us and asked me if I would like to be a model. And I said, sure. And so uh, I started being trained as a part-time model at, at Macy's department store. I went from that to having an agent and being a photographer's model. 
And my claim to fame came when I posed for the Lucky Lager beer billboard commercial. That was after I married. I tried to find a picture of it, but I found it had been removed from the collection and was no longer available. Uh, but it was sort of like the one you're going to see on the screen. Uh, I also posed for an ad campaign for the Hudson Hornet, which was a, a short-lived car. <laughs> one time I was asked to substitute for runway model at the Artists and Models Convention in Palm Springs for the designer Jacques Foth. Uh, I attended high school with the actor and entertainer Joel Gray, and uh, you see a picture here of Joel alone. Uh, we were in one school play together. I played the castanets in the background, and he was the star. <laughs> he was going with his uh, girlfriend, who was little like he was. And of course, he was awarded the Oscar for Cabaret. In the 11th grade, I met Jerry Gerard on a blind date. We fell in love and planned to marry. My agent sent me to 20th Century Fox Studios for an interview, and Jerry drove me to the studio where I was offered a one-year contract at Pasadena Playhouse for training and then to be followed by a screen test. And if the test was good, I could be offered a contract. I said, no, thank you, because I want to get married. And I always teased Jerry that if it wasn't for him, I could have been a star. We were married in 1950. Jerry and I have two children, Michael, 68, and Lisa, 65. We had five grandchildren. Our oldest was 48, and the youngest is 42. We have six great-grandchildren, three girls and three boys, who range in age from three years to 20 years. We married when he was in service in Northern California, and I was earning a living in Southern California. So we were both teenagers. He came home whenever he could for weekend visits, and I shared a house with a school friend whose husband was in the Navy. This was during the Korean War. We were both pregnant, my girlfriend and I. <laughs> Michael was born where Jerry was born at Hollywood Hospital in 1951. And Jerry got out of the service. We moved to Napa, California, where he had a job as a flight instructor to prepare for his career as a commercial pilot. We raised chickens for eggs. We failed in the egg department, so we ate the chickens. Lisa was born three and a half years later. After accumulating the required number of flight hours and licenses, Jerry was accepted by Continental Airlines and we moved to El Paso, Texas. There we had a live-in maid, Julia, and our children learned to speak Spanish. Uh, I did too, to an extent, <laughs> but with her around, especially uh, only Michael, could interpret uh, English or the Spanish for Lisa into English. So we had to insist that uh, she, we don't speak Spanish at all. We were at my mom's house one time for a visit and my mother called Lisa over to put on her shoes and there was no response. And so my mother realized it and said, Lisa, Zapatas, and she came right over. I worked for El Paso Natural Gas Company, and I worked my last time as a model at the White House Department Store in El Paso in 1956. Jerry was furloughed from Continental, but then got a job with Capital Airlines, and we moved to Minnesota. That was my first experience of fall colors, having grown up in California. We didn't have a change of seasons. I'd never seen the golds and beautiful colors. And I picked a whole bunch of those envelopes, put uh, uh, leaves, put them in an envelope, mailed them to my mother so she could enjoy the colors. And she wa wanted to know 
why I sent her an envelope full of dead leaves, <laughs> and they were no longer colored. We did build and design the first home we owned in Bloomington, Minnesota, and it was there that I first joined the League of Women Voters in 1957. Through the League, I learned critical thinking, how to do research for pro and con of nonpartisan issues, to give talks to groups, and I really had an advanced political education which led to a lifelong career in the League. We then moved to Mundelein, Illinois in 1961. We were transferred by the airline and we built our second home. I called the City Hall and asked to contact the local League. I was shocked to find out they didn't have one and the closest one was in Lake Bluff in Illinois. So I joined that League and chaired the Human Resources Committee. I established the Libertyville Mundelein League of Women Voters in 1968 and was elected its first president from 68 to 70. We moved to Woodstock, Illinois in 1972 where we designed and built our third home. This time I was the general contractor because Jerry was in and out of town and this experience taught me a lot about construction. We now had 20 acres, a five acre pond, two horses and a colt. I chaired the Know Your Town study for Woodstock whose local league had been established in 1940. I served on the election laws committee, the land use committee and as elected president and subsequently I was elected to the State Board of Illinois. I had a reception in my home for the newly elected Governor Walker and leading politicians. Jerry and I were subsequently invited to the Capitol along with members of the State League Board for dinner. And that was a very interesting evening I started my own public relations business, JG Communications, along with a friend of mine who was a graphics designer for the high school. Uh, we worked on political campaigns and healthcare agencies, uh, creating brochures. Uh, and I was elected to the Illinois State Board of the League of Women Voters of, as public relations and bulletin chair during which time I taught myself the use of the video camera and I chaired the committee studying the U.S. Congress. I also created a pamphlet on campaign finance for the League to sell and uh, it was a big seller. People are still interested in campaign financing. I was the first person in Illinois to serve concurrently on the State Board and as a local League president. And as public relations chair, I arranged to charter a United Airlines flight from Chicago to San Francisco with members from all around the state. And I had it piloted by uh, husbands of league members. So my husband was the captain, another leaguer's husband was a co-pilot, uh, co and the engineer, which they no longer have. Uh, I decided to go to college and I enrolled in our local community college at the same time that my grandson Eric was starting kindergarten and that's how I introduced myself in my first class as the grandmother of Eric and that we were both starting school today. After one semester I enrolled in Mundelein College now in Chicago uh, or it's now Loyola in Chicago. And there I earned a BA in history, an MA in international relations. I thought I'd like to practice international law. I went on to law school for one year before realizing that it really was too late. Jerry would be re resigning or retiring pretty soon and I would be starting a new career. While a student, I was uh, selected to be interviewed for national TV by Ed Bradley. 
the dean asked me if I would mind doing it. And I said, no, of course. So we sat at a table and we talked for about 20 minutes about uh, older women returning to college. And I think it actually aired for two minutes. And uh, I did get a call from a friend, however, in California that said she saw it. One of the state board members of the League of Women Voters was married to the editor of the Chicago Tribune at the time. So consequently, I had a, a meeting with the Chicago Trib, Trib uh, editorial board to discuss league coverage and what they could do for us. I met two young women filmmakers, and with their help, I made a film of the history of the League of Women Voters. I solicited and received the funds needed to produce the film, and it was played on video at the state convention that year. I was appointed to the county board and elected president of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And after serving as a member, I held hearings around the county and wrote briefs regarding each petition we heard for county commissioners. And then I wrote a brochure available to the public on the appeal process. And this is just another example of serendipity. I went from videos to zoning. And now I have been uh, holding meetings in adjoining counties on land use planning. I was invited to speak to a class on zoning at the University of Illinois. And uh, I was also uh, interviewed again by a magazine about women returning uh, to work or to school and uh, when I was the chair of the zoning board on the magazine was the Dynamic Years. Uh, I was also appointed to the American Arbitration Association. That comes from building three houses. And I was elected to the private Woodstock Hospital Board of Directors. I was also appointed by Illinois Representative Susan Catania to the Public Legislative Commission on the Status of Women. I served on the Older Women and Widows Committee. That sounds sort of, but we were a nice group of people. And uh, I was the project director of hearings around the state on women's issues. It was a real eye opener. Uh, my report was submitted to the Illinois legislature. And subsequently, I was appointed to the state scholarship committee. Our own overseas trips and our trips overseas with our grandchildren took us to England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Australia, Italy, Paris, Spain, Greece, Thailand, Japan, China, Hong Kong, Macau, Holland, Germany, Mexico. And then we went to Canada, Alaska, in the US, and, and then New York. Montana, South Dakota, Tennessee, Virginia, and North Carolina. We did a lot of traveling. Uh, I've been to Japan three times, uh, and the reason for that is that in 1976, uh, we had an exchange student from Japan, and she was uh, a high school graduate. Uh, we've kept in touch. I met her in London. I met her in Singapore. And I met her in Japan. Uh, she has married three boys. Her husband worked for um, uh, some car. And anyway, uh, he's now retired. And they are retired. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I'm still in touch with her. Um, the same happened in, uh, in actually was not in England. We were in Germany attending a um, wine school. And we met this couple who we made friends with. And they lived in England. And so the next thing you know, for the next three trips we took, we stopped in London to see our friends. And finally, uh, the, the fun story in Greece, um, we were at a nightclub with our daughter. It was her high school graduation trip. and. Uh, 
with, I looked over at the table next to us, and they had this lovely dish of fruit and nuts, and I, I wanted to get that. So I asked my husband to tell the waiter that we wanted that dish. And, and he tried, and by, you know, because we couldn't speak, uh, he showing them and pointing. So the, the waiter nods, yes, yes, and left and came back and put a bottle of wine on their table. <laughs> And so, of course, they looked over at us and said, thank you. And uh, the nice part about it is they all invited us to join them, at which point I got to taste the dish of fruit and nuts, which was very good. But then this couple uh, it was very friendly, and I could tell that she was asking to take us home. And so I, I said to Jerry, you know, they want to drive us home. And he said, June, we don't know these people. And I said, yeah, but look. They're tiny little people. They were all very short. <laughs> and what could that? We're, we're all, I mean, both my son, my uh, husband, and my daughter are very tall. And, and I uh, consider myself tall. <laughs> so anyway, we got in the back of this little car, and the two of them were in the front, and we start driving. And Jerry seen back, and he said, June, we are leaving Athens. And I said, oh, maybe they're taking us somewhere. And he said, yes. <laughs> Anyway, we ended up at a, like an all-night nightclub and there, where they served coffee, and uh, we showed picture, drew pictures. And uh, he drew a picture of a big ship and put it in the front and said, Capitan. And Jerry drew a picture of a big airplane and said, Capitan. <laughs> so they, they had something in common, but... The, the story really was that he had been in the Korean War and severely in, injured, taken to New York, which he said New York, uh, where he was taken care of, and uh, he felt very grateful to Americans for that. So uh, it, was, uh, it was, again, we stayed in contact with our Greek friends and, uh, and until we were taken over by... Um, bad government but, but anyway travel it has been a big part of our lives and uh, we have certainly enjoyed it but it was time to settle down and think about retirement and so we went to eagle river ontario uh, we went there because we like to fish we we had camped we had been on uh an rv um but we really wanted to have some place we could go to uh, in, in the summer months. So we purchased a five acre island in 1978 where we vacationed every summer and we enjoyed our hobbies of fishing and eating fresh fish, construction and reading. This was my Shangri-La. We added rooms to a trapper's cabin, and it became a three-bedroom house with a kitchen, dining room, indoor plumbing, big deal, and living room over the years. It was a special day when we took down the outhouse and threw out the toilet seat. We sold it in 2016 after 38 years on Eagle Lake. We spent every summer in Ontario and left many good friends. We built our retirement home in Key West, Florida in 1978. Also, we bought a lot on open water and built what we believed to be our last stop, where we could fish and swim in the sun. We spent every winter at our home in Key West while we lived in Illinois until we moved there permanently in 1986. In the winter of 1980, we flew from Chicago to Miami and then boarded Air Florida to Key West. We were hijacked and taken to Cuba where we spent many tense hours before being released to fly to Key West where we were met and interviewed by the FBI. And uh, it was very interesting to me because there were all kinds of different uh, uh, reasons why people recognized or what they thought they recognized was the hijacker 
and, and we saw different people, tall people, short people, fat people. It, there, it, I learned there that you can never count on eyewitness. But when we made our permanent move to the Keys, Key West was like a stage, and life there was a theatrical production. The whole of Key West seemed devoted to little else than having a good time, going to bars, parties, theaters, concerts, galleries, and festivals. I was ready to change my focus from politics to that culture. I joined the Tennessee Williams Spine Arts Center. I became a board member and then the president. Over time, I went on to preside over other theaters, the Red Barn Theater. Uh, actually, it was their uh, Band, we called ourselves the Band of Angels. We had did fundraising and parties to uh, enhance the budget of the Red Barn. And the Island Opera Company, uh, I joined with uh, Dean Martin, or Dean, <laughs> not Martin, <laughs> Dean Walters, uh, who was an opera singer uh, in New York before he had come down to uh, Key West. So. We started an opera company. We had some really good people, including a young girl who was a high school student in Key West who came up here to UF when she graduated. Uh, she was in the uh, art and music department. She played the lead in the, uh, oh, I can't remember, this Puerto Ricans and Americans. Uh, can't, anyway, it's a famous story. and. Um, I don't know what's happened to her since. I contacted her when she was here, but I don't remember uh, where she is, or I don't know where she is now. Uh, I, I became a paid journalist for uh, the Island Navigator, and I took a year to write a book about the United Airlines strike in 1985. It was published in 1987. And while here at Oak Hammock, I was interviewed by Hank Connor about my book. And he said it should be made into a film. So we sort of laughed over who we would choose to be in the lead. I had transferred my membership to the League of Women Voters of Monroe County and eventually became its president. I was then nominated and elected to the state board of the League of Women Voters. I resigned after one year because I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I am a 28-year survivor. I was chosen to receive the Woman of the Year Award by Zonta, which was an NGO and Business and Professional Women's International Club that I was a member of in 2001. Uh, I had created and chaired an awareness breast cancer walk for life in 1993 to honor my best friend, Marilee McCoy. After a while, I was asked to consider a local TV program by the station manager of TCI Channel 5. And I, I wrote a proposal and it was accepted and uh, Marilee named it County Line with June Girard. It began in 91, 1991 and ended in 2000 and one. I had the privilege to interview many interesting and prominent people, and I most enjoyed the authors that I was privileged to meet. Here at Oak Hammock, Dick Martin and I got together to do interviews on authors who lived here. And you might have seen one or two of them during the pandemic. I was appointed to the Monroe County Library Board. I was a member and then president of the Monroe Council of the Arts, and I was voted chair emeritus when I resigned. I was appointed by Governor Childs to the board of the Lower Keys Medical Center. And here's serendipity. I went from zoning to the arts, and now I'm going to hospitals. Uh, and all just happen, no plan. I was elected president of the board, presided over the lease of the hospital to a healthcare company, 
and I was asked to serve on the administrative board of that leasing company. I resigned as president of that board in 2003. I brought an art in the hospital project to our hospital, which included live music entertainment and beautiful local art on our walls. It was this activity that brought me to Gainesville. I attended an art in the hospital conference held by Shans at the Hilton Hotel. My board said I could uh, fly or I could rent a car and I decided on renting the car so that Jerry and my mother, who was visiting, could go with us, with me. So everybody came to the Hilton Hotel, and while I was in the conference, they were running, driving around Gainesville, and they found uh, Hale Plantation, uh, which was being built at the time. And he brought back brochures of what it was to be while I was in the, the, the conference. Um, we settled in Gainesville in 2006 when uh, Jerry had suffered a stroke in Key West and we found even though I was on the hospital board that we were not able to address that and you know, he would have to go up to Miami. Um, he decided, we read about strokes, and they said, if you've had one, you're likely to have another, at which point he said, I'd like to be someplace where they could help me. And I remembered Gainesville. I pulled out my file that he, I made when we were here in a conference. I called the realtor, and he, it had been five years, and he said, I can't believe you kept all that file for five years, but I did. And he, we, he arranged uh, for us to tour and look for property, and we settled here in 2006. I met with the editor of the Gainesville Sun, and, and we decided on unpaid submissions of my commentary. I have had an article in the Gainesville Sun every month since 2007. I stopped my monthly contributions in March of 2020. And you can say, why? I think I just got tired of <laughs> doing it. I joined the ILR in 2007 or 2008. Uh, in 2010, I became a facilitator for the Great Decisions Meeting, serving from 2010 to 2016. I really enjoyed doing that class. Uh, and I had uh, an art, I wrote an article for the foreign policy uh, newsletter on the Oak Hammock group of the great decisions. I was asked to serve on the curriculum committee and I was elected to the ILR board. I was the founder and chair of the League of Women Voters year, here at Oak Hammock and I served six years as the president of that before I resigned. I had the pleasure of meeting my old friend, Joel Gray, when he was performing at the Phillips Theater. I met him backstage after the performance. And when we talked, I mentioned our girlfriends from uh, school. And he said, incredibly, you still talk to those girls? And indeed, I do. I had five girls. We knew each other since the fourth grade. Um, we are now down to two, but we stayed together all those years. I was accepted for membership in the Athenaeum Society in 2017. I served one year as a member, one year as secretary, and one year as president. In partnership with Barbara Herbstman, we produced the League's Folly Show in 2006 and the League's Centennial Celebration this year. It's been a great ride, but I can't imagine anything else coming my way at this late date. Thank you. That was great. June, thank you so much. 
my goodness, I, I feel exhausted just listening to all that you've done. <laughs> <laughs> I think some other people have too. Um, I know that you had quite a run with the um, show in Key West. And I wondered if you had a, you said something about the people who were authors, but did you have a favorite uh, interviewee while you were there? And could you tell us about it? Uh, indeed I did, it was Joe Heller. I don't know how many have read uh, his book. I loved his sense of humor. Uh, his stories were wonderful. And as a, an individual, he was a lot of fun. Um, we talked about, I had read all his books. That's not the way I normally uh, did my interviews, but it, I was a fan, uh, if you can call it that. Uh, at the end, he, uh, what was it? He said to me, this has been a lot of fun and you're, uh, you, adorable. Uh, and you're adorable. And I said, I haven't been called adorable since I was two years old. <laughs> but he was my favorite. Uh, the other one I liked was Barbara Ehrenreich. I don't know how many have read her book. Um, she, this first book, she's a uh, biologist by training, but uh, a great author as well. I think she did uh, Dimed in America uh, after we talked. But uh, at any rate, I remember one quote from her book. If you're, if you're looking for a single men, the best place to find them is in the submarine service. It's like canned men. <laughs> Thank you. Are there other questions for June or comments? I don't see any hands. Um, if anybody wants to... <clears throat> I think Debbie Dean. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, tell me about uh, Judy Bloom. Uh, so Judy Bloom and her husband, George Cooper, still live in Key West, and they actually have a bookstore there uh, now. Um, and uh, it, it was, uh, I, I've interviewed her a couple of times because she's a local. Uh, and also George had, wrote a book. He's an attorney, uh, and it was sort of a mystery, I think. Uh, but at any rate, she's a, she's a lovely, lovely lady and uh, easy to get along with and uh, fun to talk to. I do have, uh, in fact, I've thought about that. I have videos of my interviews of uh, these authors and, and I might offer that as a series of people to see them. Um, I know Amy Tan also, she came with two little tiny dogs in a, in a basket uh, I don't know what kind of dogs they were, but they were really little and they were very well behaved right till the end. Then they came popping up <laughs> on the screen. Uh, but she was also interesting. And uh, she had a mother had Alzheimer's and uh, she told of how difficult it was to get her mother from her apartment into some kind of facility. Uh, but it's a long story, so I won't tell it now. June, I think your idea of uh, using those interviews for another ILR course is a good one. And if Margaret uh, Boonstra is, there she is. I see Barbara's here, or rather, Margaret's here. Um, she, I, I'm she's, here. I think it'd be great, yes. <laughs> Margaret yeah, is. I, I can uh, bring that. I, I can offer those, uh, the ones that I have, uh, you know, on DVD. Wonderful. I do have, uh, the complete set is at the library in Key West. And when I was there last time, the year, uh, I talked to the uh, historian at the library and they were just going from um, DVD to the little thumbprint mm -hmm. thing and digital, digital. And uh, so he, he said, I, wait and I will send you things after we have transferred. Well, then of course the pandemic hit, so nothing has happened. But I have some DVDs of my own that I could use. I'm sure we'll be back in touch. Um, Barbara Francis um, has her hand up. Barbara? I know you have quite an art collection and I wonder when did you start and 
Were they mainly things that you bought in Key West or elsewhere? No, uh, actually I started with art when I was very young. Um, I, I read books about the uh, artists that, um, the, uh, I forgot what they were called, but the ones who painted uh, outside, which was different, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. What were they? Impressionists. Impressionists, that's right. Uh, and I taught my children um, who they were. In fact, it's sort of funny, I had my uh, son at the doctor's office and we were waiting and the girl behind the desk had a picture on the uh, wall. And I said to Michael, so who painted that picture? And he said, Utrillo. And the lady at the end said, how did he know that? And I said, well, because we studied the Impressionists and so they knew all of them. Uh, and that's where I started. So I, I picked up uh, art and I met artists and uh, the, that's the history. By Key West, I had hundreds of opportunities for wonderful artists. <laughs> Just... And wonderful parties, it sounds like. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that um, we just got another hand. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Matt. You, <clears throat> uh, you had a, a fascinating uh, <clears throat> period in your life during the Capital Airline strike, as as you aided the wives of the men who had were on the strike and the strike breakers. I thought your book was fascinating telling about that. Can you share just a little bit of that experience? Well, I can show you this. This is uh, the book, it's called uh, Turbulence and it's, it's in the library here if you want to read it. Uh, yeah, I, I took a, a year off to research and write the book. Uh, I, I learned another one of life's lessons. You know, I think I was, uh, a real idealist and I thought that as Americans we simply discussed things back and forth and we came to compromises. I didn't know how nasty people could be uh, when it comes just to labor strikes um, and I wrote about that in the book. And my husband was and my, oh, and my, and my husband was a scab. That was uh, the why why I was submitted to, to, to uh, that kind of treatment. But it was uh, it was very interesting, and I was fortunate that I lived on twenty acres. So I was not, you know, easily found uh, to to be attacked in various ways. Yeah, I hear a man's voice in the distance there. Is Jerry right with you at this point? Yes, he is. He like, there he is. <laughs> He's reminding me. <laughs> I see um, a hand. Like, uh, Jack Morton has a question or a comment. Jack? Uh, yes, June. Uh, Hi, two Jack. Hi, two things. A uh, little different topics than what uh, we've talked about so far. Uh, with your experience in construction, you would have been a great lecture for the students in the School of Building Construction here on campus. That's the <laughs> idea of how you become an entrepreneur. Uh, secondly, I was unaware of your uh, interest in fishing. Uh, two things, did you any deep sea fishing and which of you are the better fisher? Well, that... I'm a lake fisherman, but uh, when we moved to the Keys, uh, we went out in a little boat with a book. And the book told us when we caught a fish, we would look it up from the picture and we would find out whether it was edible or not. And if it wasn't edible, we threw it back in. And over time, uh, I did learn the ocean fish. And, uh, but I prefer lake fishing, freshwater. Thank you. I have a I have a trophy. I have a lot of trophies. I'm I'm a good fisherman. I have a 25-pound northern pike. He's 42 inches long. Mm. One of the most exciting catches I ever had. How much would you say? 44. It's 46 inches long, 
and I have a 21 pound lake trout and a seven pound bass. Smallmouth. What? Smallmouth. So that means you were the better fisher, Minna. <laughs> I have a I have a good uh, ship captain that takes me to the right places. <laughs> and nets them. You're a good team. And nets them. Yes. <laughs> Are there other questions or comments now? I I don't see a hand up or a real hand or another hand. Okay. But, uh, uh, I do have uh, the picture of this is. The cabin in Canada, I don't know if you, am I holding it right, but anyway, that's the finished cabin in Canada uh, that I brought. And I also uh, wanted to mention a part I did, one of my other jobs. Uh, when I did uh, JG Communications, the public relations firm, and I came to Key West, um, I was hired by the uh, Big Pine Chamber of Commerce, uh, it actually was called the Lower Keys Chamber of Commerce, uh, to uh, to evaluate their uh, company and decide uh, or make suggestions for the organization of the group. Uh, and um, in, enhance membership and uh, income. Uh, I, I just got a kick. I was reading it. It was, it was the year of 1986, and uh, I, I wrote that uh, the the one of the things that I was submitting when I submitted my report was how many pages it was and how long it was and that I understood how difficult it would be to, to read that report. But just imagine, I had to type it all. <laughs> um, Those were the old days. <laughs> pardon, pardon? Those were the old days. With That's the, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Life uh, has gotten a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember, uh, so, but anyway, that was a that was a great experience, and uh, being employed by them as a consultant at, was my introduction to the Keys, actually, and I met a lot of people that way. Uh, I was very active in the women's issue. Uh, I didn't go into in great detail, but uh, we were trying to pass uh, the Equal Rights Amendment and. Um, I went to uh, the, the where the legislature was in Illinois. I, I've forgotten the town, but anyway, uh, was while there lobbying for the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, we were staying at a motel, and I went to the desk to get uh, some information. And the woman at the desk said to me. Uh, Mrs. Schlafly, we have your mail. And I said, well, I, I'm not uh, Mrs. Schlafly. And the girl behind me, I don't know if all of you know, she was the person that opposed the Equal Rights Amendment and ra ran a very good campaign against it. Uh, but the girl behind me said, take it, take it, <laughs> just to get her mail. Uh, we worked very hard. We lobbied. I've lobbied in Washington, D.C. with the League. I've spent time there, and I, I guess I didn't have a picture of Dante Fassell, who was one of my favorite legislators. Um, we got along well, and uh, he actually came and spoke at our annual meeting, League of Women Voters, one year. Uh, so, uh, and I met uh, Tip O'Neill, who uh, was a wonderful person, and whose company I enjoyed as well. I had dinner in the Senate dining room uh, at our nice, beautiful Capitol. And I guess that's it. Well, I think um, Annalise has a question, oh. I saw her hand waving. It's more or less a comment. Uh, you know, they, there's a saying, it's, it goes behind every successful woman, a uh, man is a successful, is a strong woman. 
<laughs> and I think in your case, it is both ways, also the opposite. Because well, all the things you did, Jerry was always behind you, I think. He was yeah. always supportive and he always let you do it. Yeah. So I think you're a wonderful couple, the two of you together. Oh, well, thank you, Annalise. Uh, Jerry likes that yeah, comment. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have a nickname that usually is used forever. I don't know if they can understand. No, you can, he can't hear. You can't understand you. Oh. Well, my nickname in the Keys was, that's, what's his name? June's husband. <laughs> Okay, um, any other comments or questions? If not, I think we should give June a great big hand for all she's done and for her wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you. And she thank, you for listening. <laughs> thank you so much, June. And we will see all of you next week. I hope uh, we will have Anna Edmondson with us talking about um, life in happy days, I think it is, in, in old Florida. So uh, that should also be fascinating. So thank you again, everyone, and we shall see you. Bye-bye. Be well, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Well, that wasn't so bad.